So listen to me very closely. My dude, Cloth, demands respect. He's heard too many of you people talking about how he's weak, he's ugly, ugliest Gen 9 Mon. Well, he's not going to have it anymore. And it's finally time for the Rocky Crab Boy to lash out and show why. This thing's actually a massive threat. We've got my team of Gen 9 Outcast Pokemon going up against a pretty meta-looking squad. Very scary Pokemon on my opponent's end. As always, make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this type of content. I'm having a whole lot of fun doing it, and I will continue to do so if you guys seem to show interest in it. So, you can also always leave a comment if you'd like to see any specific Pokemon for me to feature. Go ahead and let me know. I always read all of my comments, and I, I take all of your suggestions into consideration for sure. Uh, but let's go ahead and just get into the match, shall we? So, obviously, I'm going to go ahead and lead off with everybody's favorite robotic stick-looking spider boy. And he actually ends up leading off with a Jolteon. Uh, so, of course, this thing is here basically to sticky web, circle throw some things around, potentially sucker punch. Just overall be an annoying little spider boy like this thing is in the playthroughs. But he goes for the shadow ball here. I do now get up my sticky web. Uh, I am focus sash, so I know I can take an attack from whatever. Uh, but I get my webs up, and that's kind of a job well done. Because now, if this thing has thunderbolt or something like that, I pretty much you know, just die. However, I don't have much that wants to switch into a Jolteon, so I'm kind of in a position here where I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna go right for the Sucker Punch. Uh, but he actually switches out, surprisingly. Doesn't end up going for something like a Volt Switch. I was thinking maybe that thing is Choice Specs. Uh, but it doesn't look like it had that type of damage. I don't know, he just really wants to get in the Glamora, and the reason for that is because this Flower Dickhead is extremely annoying. Uh, reason number one is because it can actually spin away my hazards and uh, I can't really block that, but it can also set up every damn hazard known to man, and I need to kind of assess the situation here. I decide that since my team has so many options for setting up, I can actually bring in the old butt plug here to try to get the Dunsparce going. Sorry, the, the Dunsparce. My boy's got hella segments out here. So, does go for the mortal spin there, gets rid of my sticky web, which, you know, is annoying. My boy Weevil worked hard, he slaved over getting those webs out there, and then they just, they just spin them away like nothing ever happened, so... Uh, I do get poison here. I don't take any damage though, which is nice. And now I'm expecting this thing to probably try to go for something like Stealth Rock, uh, potential spikes, and I'm not expecting this thing to have too much offensive power. So he does end up going for the Stealth Rock here, which is perfect. Now the, the Dunsparce can go ahead and just stare into this thing's soul as deep as possible. So the glare does connect, and now that thing is going to be paralyzed. Now, unfortunately, most of these things that you are going to see will be Focus Ash to a guarantee. Uh, they, they can actually set up their toxic spikes with their, their little ability there. Uh, but now with this thing paralyzed, I have the, you know, the, the chance to be able to try to set up some coils, uh, potentially get some parahacks here, and then the, the Dunsparce with the decent bulk can actually try to make some stuff happen here. So I say fuck it, I'm going to go right for the coil. Um, <laughs> with my extra segments, I can coil, you know, a little bit better here. So I get that nice little boost, as unfortunately he does not get fully paralyzed here. It does go for the power gem. And that is going to do, you know, a chunk of damage to the point where, you know, I'm not going to be able to have too much longevity uh, with the with the sparse here, which is fine. I'm out here. He's got two sets of wings. It's all he ever needed. He, you know, finally gets an evolution, and then get, this is what Game Freak gives us. I don't know. How do you feel? <laughs> how do we feel about the Dunsparce evolution in general? I, for one, am, am happy that we at least got something. So I go for the Earthquake here, hoping for a Parahax. I know he's going to be the Sash. He does get knocked down to 1 HP, but of course, I hit him with a physical move, so that allows him to just throw some toxic, you know, coated Legos on my side of the field. And there are fucking hazards all over the place. He does, in fact, not get paralyzed and hits me with a power gem. And I swear, this Dun, this, the Dunsparce is having the roughest time. I, one, one of these days. This thing is going to Serene Grace his way into an easy dub, but that day is not today because the poison does take me out, but that's fine. The Paraluck was not there for me, and what that does do is now opens the door for the absolute goat, the cloth, the toff, ready to come in and earthbend all up on some hoes. So, the idea is this. I come in looking not too threatening, just like a, like a friendly little guy. However, I can get up a free sword stance here knowing I can outspeed, and if this thing gets paralyzed, that's fine. I just get that for free. But if it doesn't get paralyzed, it then attacks me with a power gem, likely being its only attacking move, and then activates my ability. So, I go ahead and dance with some swords, the sharpest crab on this side of the Mississippi, and get that clean little plus two attack boost. He does break through the para again, goes for the power gem, which is perfect, because what that does is now you made Toph angry. You do not like Cloth when the dude is angry. And I'm actually able to pull off the sickest new ability. What this essentially does is gives me a boost in everything except for the defenses. I paired that with the Swords Dance, and now this crab is looking like an absolute menace to society. But it doesn't stop there because now I even get my Citrus Berry, which brings me, you know, above half. Because with that poison around, I'm gonna need all the help that I can get. So, 
At this point, the cloth is in maximum overdrive and ready to just start going on a rampage. So I just go for a knockoff to guarantee that this thing goes down. He does in the process get another layer of the toxic spikes, uh, which sucks. But I'm honestly, I'm feeling like I can do some serious damage with this cloth to the point where uh, my late game sweepers can, can come in clutch. Now, one of the benefits of using a Pokemon like cloth is that people do not really know the coverage that something like this can get. So I can try to catch some things off guard and we get our first victim, the Claude Sire, looking like... These things are max HP defensive all the time. However, what he does not know is that cloth, I may look like a crab, but I'm actually part horse. I go for the high horsepower, strong ass ground move with that swords dance and the anger shell boost is easily gonna take care of the Clod Sire. And that is amazing because that is a huge threat to my team and you absolutely love to see it. Unfortunately, the poison does put me on a timer, but I'm ready to take some more, some more lives while I'm out here. So in comes Annihilate. Uh, again, one of the scarier Pokemon in the metagame right now, depending on if thing, this thing is Scarf. I don't really know which set it's going to be. I just decided to go for the knockoff. That is going to knock this dude straight off the cliff that I reside on. And down goes the Ape. Again, one of the scarier Pokemon for me to deal with. And uh, amazing. Toph still, after this poison damage, I'm able to live with 7 HP. So it's looking like I still have a chance. This dude's got one more attack left in him as in comes the Skeledurge, and of course, I just go right for the knockoff here. Skeledurge, again, one of the more annoying Pokemon to deal with. Knockoff is easily going to take care of it. One important thing to note, actually, if this was uh, unaware Skeledurge, that actually would have been a huge problem, but it looks like it was Blaze, so I get a little bit lucky there. And unfortunately, now Cloth does die to the poison. But being able to activate this thing's ability and let it go on a little go on a little rampage there was extremely fun. Cloth is the goat. But the game is still not over. There's still some threats I got to deal with. And I decide to go into, on the empty battlefield, uh, the boy Spide Ops. Just seems like my safest option as they're going to actually end up switching in the Jolteon. So uh, I can't really set up my sticky web at this point. I know it's just easily going to knock me out. But what I can do is just go ahead and uh, get a nice little sucker punch before I die and then decide to bring in a better matchup because Spide Ops isn't super useful for me in the rest of this matchup here. So I go for the Sucker Punch, able to get some nice chip on the Jolteon if it was potentially something like Focus Sash that is now broken. Uh, the Volt Switch does take care of me, uh, which is fine. Always be being knocked out by a Volt Switch is actually good because now he has to choose what he wants to switch into and then I can kind of make a matchup accordingly. So in comes young Gumby, AKA string cheese guy, everybody's favorite little golden bastard. As now I have to figure out what my answer to this is. And turns out surprisingly enough, it's actually, it's Oink alone. I mean, cause I don't have much for this, but what I do have is an Oink alone and a dream. And the reason for that is because this thing is actually gonna be ghost Terra. I haven't used my Terra yet. So my plan is uh, to be able to just go ahead and terrestrialize into the ghost type and hit it with a nice little Terra blast. If I'm not able to actually take care of it, that's fine. All I really need is the chip damage uh, to where something like Squawkabilly can outspeed and kill. So I do go for the Terra here and Honey Baked is about to Honey Bake that ass in the oven at 425. Uh, no one ever expects the Ghost Terra on this thing. It works generally to be able to avoid fighting moves. Uh, but in this case, being able to get a nice little Ghost move with Stab is kind of what I need here because he's definitely not going to click Shadow Ball against the Winkalone. So he actually ends up going for the Nasty Plot, which is extremely frightening to see this thing is already super powerful and with the nasty plot <laughs> it's so scary uh, but i go for the terror blast here hoping to potentially be able to pick up the ko but it actually is able to live with just a little sliver which is fine i, I really just needed honey baked to kind of come in here with her weird little titty tail and <laughs> take care of just a bit of chip damage off on this thing so now i died to a shadow ball and i'm out sped so i just stay in i just click uh, terror blast again he actually just goes for the make it rain of course um, surprisingly, actually should have gone for the Shadow Ball because the special attack drop uh, now happens. But of course, I, I outspeed with everything else on my team anyway. Uh, but the ham goes down, did what I needed to do. That is fine. It's always fun using Oink alone as well. As now I have two Pokemon left. I've got the Pomot who has the guaranteed kind of kill with the Mach Punch at this point against the Jolteon. And then plus I can outspeed with the boy Elvis and take care of the Golden Go here. So, uh, Squawkabilly is basically just a kind of Guts variant. I actually do not have... Uh, protect to activate my burn, but that's totally fine. I just go right for the brave bird here outspeeding that is gonna easily kill um, And with the palm out in the back It's looking like I kind of have this game in the back because cloth was able to just tear through this boy's team Which is surprising. So now the flame orb activates. I now have my guts uh, However, their last Pokemon is actually going to be the Jolteon and as you're gonna see here I actually well, so we have not seen them go for the Terra yet. Um, so I'm expecting this thing to probably Terra. I go for the Facade as they are actually going to go for the Terra here. They actually end up turning into uh, the Ice-type, which is actually interesting for Jolteon because now you get Stab 
um, in the ability to go for a nice strong ice move against ground type. So puts on his little icy snowflake helmet. And uh, as you're going to see here, actually, I end up uh, outspeeding with this Quack ability. I am uh, Jolly plus max speed. Uh, but this Jolteon, if it was fully speed invested, should have been able to outspeed me. So kind of a weird Jolteon set. Uh, but that thing going for the Terra Ice actually kind of settled the game anyway. Because then Mach Punch easily kills uh, with the Iron Fist, Punching Glove, uh, Stab with the, the Palm Mod. So that is going to be the end of the game. I just thought it was kind of an interesting one. I'm just out here battling pretty much anybody who wants to. If you would like to battle, go ahead and follow me over on Twitter. The link is in the description. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.